Morning, welcome back. I say with a question mark because today's topic has me confused. This was the fastest unfolding of events on the internet I've ever seen. Usually when there's a rise and fall, it takes about at least a business week for that person or group to do something to cause their downfall. But I blinked and we went from a fun member announcement video to an apology video. If this ain't the fastest character development arc I've ever seen, and I've watched Love is Blind, it's no secret. The popularity of idols from Korea and Japan have exploded over the past decades. New groups are being churned out like new outfits on a Fashion Nova website. There are literally designs that come out three days before you realize you needed a brown leather jacket made out of recycled footballs. Sometimes it does feel like they spin a wheel, throw a dart, and go with whatever it lands on first. We've had the classics like cute, dark, and bizarre concepts. How about a group where all the members are AI generated? Or all the members get plastic surgery publicly throughout their careers so the audience can see them get hot? Girl group members cosplaying as wrestlers. <laughs> Well, that's my bias right there. How about a pre-debut California-based indie idol group called Survey, made up of three members, Alice, Barry, and Ash? Okay, interesting. Is their concept that they're from California or What's the deal? Never thought I'd hear such a random combination of words about a J-pop group, but I'm intrigued. Let's see some introductions. So sweet! Hello, we are Sorbet! We are an idol group based in California, and today we wanted to teach you guys our call and responses! Oh boy. I'm sure you can tell why there's been a lot of discourse about this group that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. I do want to mention, we can talk about things in our little the healthy echo chamber here, since there's lots to talk about. As with all my videos, please do not go to anyone's socials to leave me in comments, because that is some weirdo behavior. Who has the time? I sure hope it's not you. Anyways, let's finish watching what these three have prepared for us today. Hello, I'm Alice, and I am the green member of Sorbet. Um, and my emoji is a little four-leaf clover, and I like to bring luck to all of my fans. Okay, pretty normal-ish for a California-based J-pop group. They actually put a lot of effort into their intros. They even have concepts and different colors for the members. We're only one color swap away from them being a Powerpuff Girl cosplay instead of this. So for my call and response, I sort of incorporate that it's pretty simple. Basically, I'm just gonna go lucky, lucky, and then all together go Alice. Oh my god, why do I want to do it? <laughs> lucky, lucky, Alice! Alice! Thank you! Hey, I am here with an open mind. Always try something at least once. Can you guys do it with me so I'm not alone? Hello everyone, my name is Barry, and I'm the leader and pink member of Sorbet. So I'm gonna teach you my call and response. So I start off by saying, Strawberry, and then you repeat back, Blueberry. And when I ask, who's everyone's sweet idol, you're gonna say, Betty John. Are you ready? Strawberry, Blueberry. Betty John. Hi, hi, Betty Desu. Oh my goodness. Okay, I can do this. Only one more left. Be serious. Hey guys, I'm Ash. I'm the red member of Slurpee. I'm gonna teach you guys my call and response. So mine is based off my Oshi March, which is the red dragon mahjong tile. And quick history lesson of my call and response includes two moves from mahjong, Hon and Kan. Hon is a three of a kind, which represents Sorbet as a trio. And then Kan is a four of a kind, which represents Sorbet, and as well as you guys. So mine's pretty long, but bear with me. Girl, this is already way too long for my goldfish brain to handle. It's gonna go clap, clap, Hon, Hon, clap, clap. And, cut, clap, clap. and then I'm gonna call Zumo, which is a winning move in Mahjong. And then I'm gonna go, it's my victory. All right, ready? One, two, clap, clap, bong, bong. Cut, No way, that's wrong. Zumo, watashi no tachi. I will say, if you've ever seen J-pop idols acting cute, which is like 95% of their shtick, or K-pop idols doing egyo, the mannerisms they're doing are pretty accurate sort of you know what i love their confidence especially miss berry chan it's very much you ever join the anime manga club back in high school as a young naive teenage boy thinking you'll be made up of cultured weeps like naruto and kingdom hearts but then when you get there it's all people with this type of energy yeah. 
and the only Asian person there was me, I mean you. And then you slowly stopped showing up because the secondhand embarrassment was too much. Not that I was any better, I did my fair share of cringy things like Naruto running around the school. But sorbet feels like an idea that happened at a sleepover at 2am with your friends. Or at an otaku club, smack dab in the middle of suburban California. This three member J-pop group is on their pre-debut stage right now, and they're planning on releasing a single along with individual solos for each member. Wow, okay, that's a lot of effort put into the planning. As with most ideas you have in high school, like starting a band or becoming a content house with your friends in English class. When it really comes down to it, it's not the idea, but the execution that's important. So none of their content is actually original music, but TikTok dances? Nothing wrong with that though. Just look at some of the biggest TikTokers that literally became C-list celebrities by dancing to trendy songs while being conventionally attractive. Sorbet is in their promotional era right now, since they don't have any originals. The best you can do when you start out is do covers and lip sync, I guess. At this point, the comments and reviews were pretty mixed. Some were here for the vibes, some found it cringy, some of it is kind of hard to watch for me personally, but there is an audience for this type of content. Two out of the three members of Sorbet even performed in front of a live audience. They actually did their introduction bit in public. If they were going to do it anywhere, an anime convention would be the place. At least their practice went to good use. Thank god the one with the mahjong concept wasn't there. And it's not that I don't like her, it's just that my uncoordinated ass would have messed up the call and response. Talk about embarrassing. Go ahead and start with mine. I'm gonna say, lucky, lucky, and then all of us together say, Alice! Are you ready? Lucky, lucky, Alice. Alice! Thank you! Hello! My name is Barry. I call and respond. It's actually going to be in Japanese, so I'm going to say strawberry! And you guys say blueberry! And then when I ask, who's everyone's sweet idol? You guys are going to say Benny-chan! So let's go! Strawberry! Blueberry! Me, Nana, Alai, Ivanwa! Benny-chan! I feel like I'm missing something. For a group of random people with no professional training, I'm assuming, they look like what you would expect them to look like. K-pop idols go through the most grueling training process just for a sliver of a chance to debut, but at least you'll come out with above average dancing and singing skills in exchange for lifelong trauma. And with social media, there's no barrier to entry anymore. You and two of your friends can put together an idol group out of sleepover and debut tomorrow if you wanted. No one's stopping you from posting it on the internet, where hundreds of random strangers will see. Whereas before, you could only force the people in your general vicinity to watch you, along with your parents. I did say anyone could do anything these days. That also means anyone with eyes and a phone can comment the nastiest things on your content. People are ruthless nowadays. Yeah, the newer generation is more open and accepting compared to previous ones, but they're also very mean, especially when they're online and anonymous. If you're debuting, you typically have to have the skills to back it up, especially when your lineup is the thing people are going to notice first. But let's say they were all fluent in Japanese, or had really exceptional dancing and singing skills. It'd be way harder for people to criticize them, and they get taken more seriously. Not to mention these people don't look like the norm when you think of an idol group. So after some of their TikToks started getting more attention, people started pointing out a few things, mainly about Betty chan This started a whole discourse about her accent and her use of Japanese in her introduction. The problem that people made Mainly had was her being white. Cause back in the day, Asian people with thick accents weren't cool. They were bullied. Asian immigrants trying their best to speak English while minding their own business got made fun of. But nowadays, if you're any sort of East Asian, well, how the tables have turned, like the ones at the dim sum place. Asian media has made it so that some people would stand a rat if it was Korean. Hana dur set, mm mm, garbage mashita. Anyaseyo, rat yong imida. 
Because of this backlash, Barry Chan issued an apology three days ago, which is already at 3 million views. And this is Barry. I just wanted to hop on really quick and address my call and response in Sorbet's latest TikTok video. So first off, I just want to start out by saying that I genuinely and wholeheartedly apologize to every single person that I have upset or that I have offended with my call and response. I truly did not have any ill intent, but I also understand that I have hurt a lot of people and for that I am sorry. I, as a white person, have an insane amount of privilege and I will never truly understand the struggles that people of color go through. And I did not mean to undermine or ignore or disregard any of those struggles. And I am sorry. Okay, so far, pretty standard as far as apology videos go. Someone called it a pre-debut apology video. Well, that's new. I've never seen that before. Now, I did want to give some background on my call and response and explain why it was the way it was. The reason why my call and response is in Japanese, despite Sorbet releasing music in English, is because when I eventually have my own tracks, I plan to release solo music almost exclusively in Japanese. And I figured that since I'm the same person, whether I'm solo or in a group, that I could use the same call and response in both instances. Also, my boyfriend, who is Japanese, unintentionally came up with part of my call and response. Um, one day we were just talking about my idol career and on a whim he just made up something. Well, it's not like it's the worst thing to bring up in this specific situation, but you always hear those people say, I can't be racist, I have insert race friends. They're the ones that ruin things for everyone else. I thought that since my call and response is in Japanese, that if I pronounced the words strawberry and blueberry the way that the katakana would be read out loud, that it would be okay. And I see now that I was wrong. So in the end, is it cultural appropriation? For me, I really don't think it is. I didn't get the sense she was going out of her way to mock Japanese culture or be disrespectful. Betty Chan was definitely the most gung-ho about replicating how Japanese idols act, except in English. Like watch Japanese idols speak to their fans. It's like constant fan service while speaking in a really high energetic tone with the kawaii meter turned up to a thousand. It'd be weirder if she came out on stage without acting kawaii and said, Hey y'all, I'm Burger Chan from Texas. When I say ye, you say ha. Shake shack this. Acting cute is literally built into some Asian cultures. I could see this being popular with Asian people that live in Asia. Not the ones here that think it's cringy. But a white idol being able to speak fluent Japanese? They'll eat that sh up like Wanyong eating a strawberry with two hands. Being overly cute in North America isn't always seen in the most positive light. We had a moment with e-girls and the awu baby voice culture at one point. There really is an audience for everything. Kitten number one, are you here? Remember Bella Porch? She blew up on TikTok from acting cute and lip syncing to songs, and now she's a famous singer. But there's been another shift, and the general consensus seems to be in favor of it being cringy again. Maybe, I don't know, there is way too much happening online to keep track of. Anyways, it looks like Sorbet is gonna have their first performance pretty soon, May 21st. Oh, I wonder if it happened already. Oh. Yikes. This whole situation took a really dark turn in a span of a week. Did someone hit the two times speed button on YouTube? I really don't know. To me it seemed like bullying disguised as virtue signaling. I saw a comment that said, there's a huge difference about finding something cringy and hard to watch, and something that's actually problematic. Situations like this always happen. Remember that K-pop group EXP edition that tried to debut in Korea? Or was that a fever dream? Where three of the members were white, and one of them was half Japanese, half white. Yeah, if the survey situation wasn't already an indication of how that went, but looking back, their dancing and singing weren't even that bad. Sure, the pronunciation's not perfect, but it's still pretty good. Maybe maturing is realizing they actually ate something. Personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with non-Asians trying to break into the Asian entertainment industry. If you have a genuine interest and you're willing to learn the language and culture, then there shouldn't be a problem. Sorbet is not off to a strong start, bestie. The only thing that gives me hope for the situation is 
maybe it's for marketing. They went from being virtually unknown to having a pretty modest following, and a third of their TikToks are already sitting at a million views. People are also donating to their coffee, which actually gives me some hope for humanity. I guess we'll see where we go from here. Will they ride the wave and come out with some good music? They're at the peak of their popularity right now, and rage marketing in this day and age works really well. Sometimes I wonder, if I was actually indoctrinated into that anime manga club back in high school, I could have turned out like this. Wow, thanks for the finger hearts. I love you, Pookie. I don't really get gifts that often. That's so kind. Thank you. Anyways, give this video a like so the YouTube algorithm can start a J-pop group with Instagram and Twitter, leave a comment for engagement, and I'll be debuting on your recommended page with new content. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and see you in the next one.